ways in which a typical cell is adapted to its function. So that is our topic for today. Welcome to Teacher Geo's channel and let's begin. As we all know, cells are the basic units of life in organisms and different types of cells are specialized to perform specific functions. I hope you've noted what cells are. These adaptations allow cells to carry out their roles efficiently. So here are the key ways that a typical cell is adapted to its functions. The first one I'm going to talk about is the cell membrane and the major adaptation that we all know is selective permeability. So the function is it controls what enters and leaves the cell. That is the function of the cell membrane. In terms of adaptation, we say the cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer embedded with proteins, allowing selective transport of nutrients, waste, and signals. So that is the first one. The second one, you're going to talk about nucleus. Nucleus are the control center. Its function is it stores genetic material, that is the DNA, and regulates cell activities like growth and division. In adaptation, it is enclosed by a nuclear membrane to protect the DNA and contains pores that allow the exchange of materials like RNA. That is all about nucleus. The third one is cytoplasm which is the medium for chemical reactions. The cytoplasm hosts biochemical reactions that keep the cell alive. That is its function. Adaptation, it contains enzymes and organelles necessary for cellular metabolism, ensuring efficient functioning. Let's talk about the mitochondria, which is involved with energy production. Its function is that the mitochondria generates energy in the form of ATP through respiration. Its adaptation is it has a folded inner membrane known as cristae, increasing the surface area for energy production processes like oxidative phosphorylation. Next is ribosomes, which is majorly involved with protein synthesis. Its main function is ribosomes synthesize proteins necessary for cellular activities. Adaptation, ribosomes are either free in the cytoplasm for internal proteins or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum for proteins to be exported. So you understand where it is involved with protein synthesis. Next is endoplasmic reticulum, which majorly involves transport and synthesis. Its function is involved, it is involved in the synthesis and transport of proteins, that is in rough endoplasmic reticulum, and also transport of lipids in smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Take note of that. So when you're talking about endoplasmic reticulum, you need to take note of the two types which are rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is involved in the transport of lipids while rough endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the transport and synthesis of proteins in adaptation we say the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached allowing it to efficiently produce proteins for secretion the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is adapted for lipid metabolism and detoxification so that is all about endoplasmic reticulum. Next is Golgi apparatus, which is involved with packaging and transport. Its function is that Golgi apparatus modifies, sorts, and packages proteins and lipids. Its adaptation, it consists of flattened membrane sacs, known as cystinae, that allow efficient processing and transport of cellular products so that is about Golgi apparatus next is lysosomes which is used and also involved in waste management its function is that it breaks down waste materials and cellular debris adaptation it contains digestive enzymes and closed in a membrane to prevent these enzymes from damaging other cell components I hope you understand that. 
Next is vacuoles, which is used in storage and osmoregulation. Its function is that vacuoles store water, nutrients, and waste products. When you're talking about adaptations of vacuoles, we have in plants, a large central vacuole helps manage tagger pressure, while in animal cells, smaller vacuoles store nutrients and waste. Okay, we'll talk more about the vacuoles as we'll be ending the lesson. Next is chloroplast. In plants, chloroplasts are used in photosynthesis. Its function is that it converts light energy into chemical energy through photosynthesis. Its adaptation is that chloroplasts contain chlorophyll and have internal membranes known as thylakoids arranged in stacks known as grana to increase surface area for light absorption. Hope that is well understood. Next is cell wall. And we're going to talk about cell wall in plants, which is involved in structural support. Its function, cell wall provides rigidity and protection in the plant cells. Its adaptation is that cell wall are made up of cellulose fibers, which provide strength while still allowing the cell to grow and change shape. Hope that's understood. And then we have specialized adaptations in specific cells. So if you still want to talk about ways in which a typical cell is adapted to its function, you can add this part. And one is the red blood cells. And how it is adapted to its function is that the red blood cells lack nuclei to increase space for oxygen-carrying hemoglobin. The second one is sperm cells, which have a flagellum for movement and many mitochondria for energy. Then we have nerve cells, which have long axons that allow efficient transmission of signals over distances. So in this today's topic, uh, we have talked about ways in which a typical cell is adapted to its function. It involves both animal cell and plant cell. That is the end and see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Teacher Gia's channel. And also follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.